A esto le llaman despectivamente el insultadero de los sábados, ¿no? Yo no sé cuándo he dicho una palabra soez, es procas. Ya no sean tan puercos. Y a esta porquería le damos la del zorro. Prensa como buitre. A buscar carroña, ¿no? Pura basura. La putrefacción, la pestilencia. Esto me causa repulsión. Hipócritas. Prensa corrupta. Cavernaria. Groseres. Cobardes. Pasquín. Jauría. Prensa perversa. Mentirosos. Cínicos. Y antipatria. Estos pasquines son golpistas. Prensa conspirativa. Son ustedes criminales. Asesina de Alfaro. Sicarios de ti. Sin vergüenzas, cojan esta prensa corrupta. No sean engañados por estos sinvergüenzas. Rafael Correa has been in power for five years now, and he's up for re-election next year. As soon as he took office, he called for a referendum on a new constitution. Uh, this led to a tug of war between Congress, Constitutional Court, and the Electoral Tribunal. In the end, he got the referendum by way of gaining the majority in Congress. And, com and a complacent constitutional court. A constitutional assembly gathered and gave us a new constitution, but also a new control authorities and a new Supreme Court. The new constitution brought us novelties like the executive power to dissolve Congress and the president's power to veto and amend the law, as he sees fit. One year ago, we had yet another referendum. Uh, this time we had to choose for an absolute restructuring of the justice system, media regulation, property restrictions, uh, ban on casinos, bullfighting, amongst other things. Today, um, control authorities don't control, Congress doesn't legislate, and the opposition doesn't oppose. We are living in a pseudo-democracy where elections keep the same people in power and referendums make the law. The government had cut some benefits of the police force, and uh, policemen were upset about this, of course, and uh, they protested on September the 30th of 2010. President Correa went to the police compound to try and defuse the situation himself, only to make matters worse. He ended up inside a police hospital next door to the compound, and later that day, a military rescue operation took place. This is a video. Se está, se está dando incidentes aquí en la parte exterior del regimiento Quito. Ustedes pueden ver. Y es que la asamblea les quitó sus condecoraciones. Sorprendido y sin protección. Y abucheo soportó el mandatario. El gobierno nacional, la señal de Teleamazonas se enlaza con la de EcuaTV. Esto de aquí es una intentona de golpe de Estado. Que sale aquí como presidente o como cadáver. Los afanes golpistas. El pueblo de Quito, que vaya al hospital a rescatar al presidente de la República. Están intentando generar un golpe de Estado. Permitan la salida del presidente que está secuestrado. Los policías dicen que el presidente no está secuestrado y que lo van a dejar salir con total libertad y, e incluso han pedido a sus compañeros que no haya agresiones y que mientras salga el presidente del hospital van a entonar el himno a la Policía Nacional. El grupo especial de operaciones que van a ingresar a sacar al presidente de la República. Vamos. Está el vehículo saliendo. Ustedes pueden apreciar. Levántate. Ahí, levántate. ahí sale el presidente de la República. The man you saw fall down at the end of that video is, uh, was Sergeant Froilán Jiménez. Um, he was um, one of the five policemen that died during the rescue operation. Um, shortly after this shameful event, 
the police was the police force was completely restructured, and uh, one question remained: uh, What would be the fate of the policemen involved in this, in all this? Uh, the president wanted to put the incident behind him, uh, but he considered granting them a pardon. Uh, Congress offered to grant them amnesty, and this was the whole debate that was going on in the nation. When on February 9th of 2011, Emilio Palacio, the opinion editor at El Universo, our newspaper at the time, wrote an op-ed article about everything, about the 30th of December, about the amnesty, the pardon, this whole thing. And uh, the article was quite strong, but especially the last paragraph, which is the one that triggered everything. And the last paragraph read, the dictator should remember, finally, and this is very important, that with a pardon, in the future, a new president, perhaps his enemy, could take him to criminal court for ordering fire at will and without warning against a hospital full of civilians and innocent people. Next month, on March 30th of 2011, we were served with a lawsuit. Now, it was not a civil suit. It brought criminal charges against the author and the publishers and the company. This was a defamation suit, but it was no ordinary defamation suit. It was criminal defamation of a public official, which really means contempt of authority, which is based on laws that were created by the military regimes of yesteryear, which is still part of Ecuadorian law today. In the lawsuit, Correa asked for severe sanctions and disproportionate compensations. The author and the publishers must go to jail for three years and pay $50 million, amongst the four of us. The company must also pay $30 million. The process was plagued by irregularities. Um, at the local level, the local court, the judge was replaced five times. Finally, Judge Juan Paredes took office, held a hearing, read 5,000 pages of a case file, and wrote 156 pages of a ruling in record time, 32 hours. Judge Paredes ruled that uh, the author and the publishers go to jail for three years, pay $30 million, and that the company pay $10 million. Oh, and he also chipped in $2 million for legal fees for Correa's lawyers. In the appeals court, things were no different. Um, the three judges that formed the appeals court were replaced, all of them. And finally, they just ratified the ruling. By the time we appealed and went to the Supreme Court, Correa's process of restructuring the, system, the justice system had already taken place, and his new justices had already taken office. So, by no surprise, by February 15th, when we had a large, a large hearing, we were denied the cassation of the sentence. Now, what followed was sort of surprising, even for us, especially for us. Precautionary measures were issued. One of the publishers was granted political asylum and an overwhelming reaction by media, NGOs, and institutions the world over. Some of this, or part of this, or all of this, actually pressured the president into granting us a full pardon a few days later. And so we didn't have to go to jail, and we didn't have to pay any money. We are still running the newspaper, but the ruling is a judicial precedent for lawsuits to come. And what we're left with is really people afraid to speak up. And that's where we're at right now. And I want to leave you with one more thing.
y Burke en Veracruz te dio la, 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 la primera parte de la sentencia en la tarde ¿Sí? porque el día el anterior que tú y yo hablamos no tenías nada nada ¿Sí? en la noche a las 11 de la noche no hiciste cambios en la sentencia tal cual no hiciste no ¿qué le voy a hacer? ah, 60 millones estamos en el día Thank you.